This video illustrates our approach to simulating the culture of the city of Arak in ancient Mesopotamia in the period of around 3000 BC. Arak is believed to be the first human-built city on Earth and played a key role in the invention of writing and development of many scientific disciplines, amongst which are mathematics and astronomy. It is located in present-day Iraq, situated roughly 250 kilometers south of Baghdad. Based on the results of archaeological excavations and available written sources, the city was recreated in the virtual world of Second Life. The reconstruction was supervised by the subject matter experts to ensure its authenticity. The actual city was very large, so the reconstruction features an approximation of the actual city and includes the key buildings only. The video is recorded through the eyes of a visitor. All the moving characters are controlled by virtual agents. The agents reenact the lives of two fishermen families. Each family features a husband and a wife. No children are currently present. The agents literally live in the virtual world of Second Life. The day is approximately 15 minutes long and starts with waking up on the roof of the house. The wives would wake up first to collect some water from the well, start the fire and prepare breakfast for their husbands. Sleeping on the roof is due to the very hot climate. Although most of the buildings in Iraq had ventilation holes, the temperatures inside, especially during summer, could become quite unpleasant, and most of the citizens would prefer sleeping on the rooftop in the evening, where it would have been much cooler. Each of the houses would also have sleeping mats inside, but these were mostly used for the afternoon nap. To enable these scenarios, we have used the virtual institutions technology. This technology is supplied with the agent library, allowing to program the agent behaviors and facilitating the use of 3D objects by the agents. Our technology also enables formalizing institution. The institution captures the social structure, rules of behavior, interaction protocols, and social norms. As you can see in the prototypes, the agents interact with each other and synchronize their actions. This is enabled by our technologies through letting the agents exchange text messages with each other. They also communicate with some of the objects in this way. One of the biggest differences in the life of ancient Sumerians that we try to highlight compared to the way of life of modern people is the lack of recreation time. The members of the featured fishermen families, especially women, are constantly working. The men can afford to have a morning chat while waiting for the breakfast to be prepared for them, but their day is also filled up with work. After a short chat, the fishermen would have a light breakfast, then they would collect their fishing gear and head to the city gates. Outside of the city walls, they would find their fishing boat. Their social status is not very high, and therefore they have to rely on each other constantly and share their possessions with each other. The boat is owned by the older fishermen, while the spear is the property of the younger fishermen. They are also highly dependent on each other, as one of them has to paddle the boat and another fisherman has to catch the fish. The object used by the agents is also quite complex. The objects can be taken, carried around, dropped and exchanged. The, ca the case of the boat illustrates the complexity of object use. You see two agents on top of the boat object and having the basket object that was brought from the city placed next to them, while the boat object itself is moving along the river. The agent behavior is restricted to those actions permitted by the institution. The agents must comply with the social norms, interaction protocols, and are only permitted to participate in those activities that their social role grants them the access to. Having an institution also allows us not to differentiate between agents and humans. For an agent, it potentially doesn't matter whether it interacts with the agent or a human, as long as the human follows the interaction protocol specified for the given scene. For example, it is clearly expressed that the fishing scene is activated by the boat keeper who has to collect the pedals and board the boat. Only then the younger fisherman can join him. Once both agents board the fishing boat, the boat can start moving and the fishing process begins. At present, the agents don't interact much with the human visitors. The only reaction our agents are programmed to exhibit to the outsiders is to stare at them when at close proximity. In the future, we will let the visitor choose a certain social role and be actively involved into complex interactions with the virtual agents. 